Okay, thanks for coming. Uh, a couple comments first, uh, as I tried to do every time, with sincerity uh, on behalf of our players and staff. Buckeye Nation is awesome. Um, you know, they, they're up in that right-hand corner up there, but uh, 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 thanks for following us. Also, uh, with great respect for our opponent, that was a, that was a real one. That was a very talented team. And that quarterback, uh, you know, I just always tried to do that. If you guys notice, is always straight. Uh, I talked to Coach Shano today that McSorley is, uh, is a war daddy now. That's, uh, that's his competitive guy. And uh, I, like I said, I don't know him personally. Competed against him from several years. And uh, so uh, very, very uh, competitive player and great player. So with that said, uh, uh, review champions with you on defense. You got Jonathan Cooper, played very well. Davon Hamilton, Malik Harrison, Pete Werner, Tuff Borland, Kendall Sheffield, Jeffrey Okuda, Jordan Fuller. Uh, defensive player of the game was Chase Young. And uh, three tackles, three assists, three tackles for loss, two sacks, two QB hurries, and two QB knockdowns. Um, Ohio State offensive champions, you got J.K. Dobbins, um, 20 touches for almost 120 yards, two touchdowns. Weber played well, still uh, battling through that foot, but he should be getting closer to 100% this week. You have receivers, Ben Victor. Uh, I've been telling you about him since the last couple weeks, and uh, his 47-yard uh, reception, I believe that's what it was, was a game changer for us. Johnny Dixon, K.J. Hill, uh, and Austin Mack. Uh, Guys are playing this uh, selflessness and blocking. You know, you guys remember in 2014, I would make comments about that group, and this is, uh, you know, still too early, but there's uh, a lot of similarities between that group. And, you know, obviously Evan Spencer was the lead guy back then, and I'm looking at these guys and some of the things they're doing uh, A to Z with uh, the receiver play on special teams, et cetera, is, is phenomenal. You have uh, offense linemen, you got Isaiah Pryor. Demetrius Knox and Michael Jordan. And you got the player of the game, which is uh, uh, incredible. Didn't have one catch, but Terry McLaurin was offensive player of the game. And uh, you got to say, what's the culture? What's the expectation level of uh, to play here? He's the epitome right now. You know, once again, I, with great reverence, I use the word Evan Spencer around here. I've been told I may get carried away at times, but I do. Get carried away with guys like Terry McLaurin. I can't. Uh, him and Paris, those guys just go so hard. So uh, leads me into this. Um, player of the game on special teams, we had four of them. Uh, Jeffrey Okuda had 23 production points, but he had three tackles on punt, and uh, he was the first down on kickoff. He's a, performing at an elite, elite level. And we punted far too many times, but that's nine punts. Nine punts of a 50-yard net. I think it's 48 net. Just do the math. Not a math major, but that's a lot of yards uh, throughout the course of a game against a very good team, an excellent returner, and then also playing all those plays on defense. Justin Hilliard uh, is also co-player of the game. Uh, kickoff was phenomenal, uh, and punt was phenomenal, and he's on all four units, uh, elite player for us. Terry McLaurin, he had three tackles on punt. He downed the punt on the two-yard line, and just once again, I just stand with those guys on the sideline. Him, Akuda, him and Akuda were just blown out and to the point where most average human beings would pull themselves out of the game for a blow and they're not doing it. So it was phenomenal. And especially when uh, Damon Arnett went down uh, in the fourth quarter, there's more stress on Jeffrey Okuda. Our punter is, uh, I can't imagine one better. I haven't really studied the country, but he had nine punts, which is far too many, but 47-yard net, 47-yard uh, net. I want to say they had two return yards on three attempts. I think I think uh, what it was. So that's uh, where we're at. You know, I could uh, go on for the next hour and a half and talk about special teams because that uh, was as significant as anything, especially uh, on the punt uh, or punt coverage. That's it's uh, elite right now, and it's driven by two guys that uh, are also starters on offense and defense. It was a little bit of a call to arms meeting yesterday that we still need to get more production out of some people that have either been with the program for a year or two or freshmen that uh, are talented, but they got to play. And so the, every team's dealing with it right now. Game six coming up, and we're banged up. 
um, like every team in the country. So uh, guys have to contribute in some way or the other. That was the meeting yesterday. That'll be the continuation as we continue to go forward. I'll answer questions for you. Uh, middle row back, Patrick. Urban, last year you guys had this big win over Penn State. You go to Iowa the next week in a bit of a letdown. When you, when you have games like this with, with huge comebacks and high stakes, what's the message to the team this week to make sure you know, the level remains where it needs to be? We haven't had that conversation yet. We will. You know, that's, that's the real. That's real. That's, uh, you know, especially at places like Ohio State where you just won the Super Bowl. You didn't win the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, beat a really good team, and now you got to get ready for another really good team. So uh, that'll be the message. And when you look back at that game, do you do you think that the effect of the Penn State game carried over? Or I'm gonna look it? forward at all. Okay. Look forward. Thanks. Front row left, Mitch. Uh, Urban, um, what specifically, looking at the defense, do you need to shore up, fix, whatever? to be effective down this stretch? That's a great question. Um, well, you, you just have to evaluate the plays, you know, and it's, it's, it'd be like saying, okay, on, uh, on punt, we did, you know, punt was really good other than two plays. You know, that's not acceptable. You know, we gave up a 90-plus yard reception in man coverage. You know, safety's got to get them down and don't get beat in man coverage. We had a quarterback that was performing one of his best games of his career. Some of it was scramble, some of it was a direct run. And then we all know around here that when you have that kind of player like we had for a long time, JT, a dual threat guy, that's a hard thing to defend. But he also threw on, on point. So the answer is you have to play better. Uh, I think uh, that's the same conversation we've had, and you've got to continue to work. I understand we have some new, new players, but this game, it's week six. We just can't give up those darn big plays. That's what it's been. Far left, Lori. Coach, you mentioned a call to arms yesterday. Your defensive coaches have been telling the guys that they're still growing, maybe more than usual, and you've got a very inexperienced quarterback. I'm wondering if this team is a little farther from its ceiling than most teams would usually be at this point, even given what you saw Saturday night. I think that's a great question because you're five and zero, oh, and uh, we we haven't played close to our best game. You know, I think TCU is a really good game. I don't, and it's all relative because you have to say where were you and who did you play against, and you can say what's well, a great environment. It's a great environment, but what made that a great environment was players they had. And so we, you know, that was two sledgehammers going against each other, two very talented teams. So, yeah, I think you watch the film and you're like, at times, awesome. I mean, you know, just the fourth quarter on offense was, you know, perfect. Uh, not perfect, but well done. The first two quarters, you have to give credit. You know, you can't just say, well, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. Look at who you're playing against. They did a very good job what they were doing, which was basically pressuring us 80% of the time, and we didn't handle it well. Uh, we ended up handling it very well in the second half. So this team, to answer your question, Lori, the, there is a tremendous ceiling on this, and we haven't got close to it. Uh, Matt, far left. Um, just health-wise, uh, you, you mentioned Damon Arnett, uh, Draymond Jones. How, how are they? Uh, uh, how did you come out of that game? Because you used the word sledgehammer. It yeah, it was a tough game. game. It was. Uh, Draymond's probable. He has a, uh, uh, a sprain, but he's, he's very probable. Damon Arnett's probable. And B.B. Um, Landers didn't play himself, and Mike Weber didn't play himself, and they're closer and closer. They're, they're better than they were last week. Um, and also, just what did you, in a situation like that, I, when JT was a freshman, you talked about that Penn State game was where he you know, really grew. I'm wondering from Dwayne's case, struggling or whatever, but then comes a big 96 yard drive. What did you learn about him? What did you learn about your team? <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, you know, those are usually uh, conversations after the season, you know, because we're right in it. And our focus is, that's, you know, I'll do respect to everybody here to start reflecting. We, you know, we got to get ready for a really good Indiana team that I believe is 4 and 1. So, at times, we'll have that chat, but not now. Front row middle, Dave. Urban, if you're facing a fourth and inches situation, uh, I know you guys are in the shotgun all the time, but why not mix in some quarterback sneaks in those situations? 
a lot of different reasons. You know, you see teams a lot that's operating 99.999 out of the shotgun, and then they go under center and they drop the ball it's just because you don't do it. You know what I mean? Those are – we've had those conversations over and over again. We did it a couple of times at Cardell Jones, you know, under 14, I think. Those are questions we – conversations. I'm just answering your question. I'm not saying we won't. I mean, I guess the, the follow-up would be, like, why not just practice it more? Because it seems like such an effective play. And Duly football. noted. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Coach, a lot has been said about this group of receivers in terms of the weapons they are on the outside, but to have success in the screen game like you did Saturday, there has to be great blocking downfield. Can you talk about this group of receivers? The elite well? blocking. Great's probably not a strong enough adjective right now for what's going on out there. And that's uh, Heartline's done a great job, but you know you got three captains. Uh, ben Victor, uh, Ben Victor. Now I'm saying this because I love him. Darn near refused to block. Didn't play a whole lot. He had one of the biggest blocks of the game Saturday. One of the you know, down the left sideline. Uh, I can't remember who caught the ball because I don't care who caught the ball. I care about blocking, and it was uh, elite. We had a little. Uh, moment together with the receivers and Ben Victor, he's become, as Paris said, he's become one of us. And that's a pretty cool thing. Second row, middle, uh, James. Urban, we've seen, we haven't seen in the past a lot of running back screens with this offense. We've seen the bubble screens and the RPO. Uh, we saw a lot of that with, with JK on, on Saturday. How much of that is Ryan, maybe Ryan Day's influence or just the personnel that you guys have? Ryan and Kevin a lot. Uh, and it's just we're a different team. You know, we're, uh, you know, in the drop back pass, we're dropping back a lot. And so what's the natural progression is a tailback slow screen. And that was, you know, of the big plays, I think Ben Victor's was number one. I think on the four-yard line coming out, that's number two, the slow screen to uh, J.K. Third row, Dan. You talked about Terry McLaurin and what he's done, the little things he does. How important is it for you to recognize someone like him as an offensive player of a game and make that example that it's not just about catching passes? Well, what is the seventh year? That's always been kind of a, you know, this unselfish player. You know, it's the same thing when you, you know, people, I, I see people smile. It's not real funny around here. When you score a touchdown, you go hug the lineman. You flip the ball to the official and you go hug the lineman. If not, you're not going to score many more because that's, it's the, it's the selfless, it's the uh, uh, fellowship of a team that, that's what it's all about. And so we spent, usually it's a 30 minute team meeting, probably 45 minutes yesterday. And every player on the team watched the punt. Every player on the team. And there's two reasons you do that. Number one is to um, show the and reward the efforts of a player. But I'm also talking to that player in row nine that is, you know, a four star guy that thinks he's real good. But, uh, but, why aren't you on KOR? Why are you not running down on punts? Explain that to the team here right now. And those are hard conversations to have, especially when you see Okuda and uh, Terry. So we do that, and uh, you know what I do with you is minimal compared to what we do with the team because that's a belief of our program. Also, KJ Hill scored the game-winning touchdown the other night. It seems like he has a knack for coming up with big plays and big games. What is it about him that you think? He's, just what you see? said. He's a tough dude, man, and he's a, a really good football player. You know, and uh, his ball skills are, you know, he had the one catch on the other bubble screen. Uh, just, and he's a great blocker. So he can do it all. Front row left. Doug? Urban, um, you're, whenever you talk about, like, having the drop back passer this year and we saw Trace running out there and we know how successful you've been with the quarterback, the dual threat quarterback in your career, is there just a is there just a part of you that just still is not a hundred percent comfortable with the idea of your you just don't have a quarterback right? He's great, he's great, but he's just not going to run twenty times. Is there is that still hard for you at all? That's a good question. <laughs> I think it is. I, my guess would be it is. Okay. So what's your answer? So what's your answer? Um. We're five and zero. Oh. Uh, we're, you know, I have two very good coaches. You know, more than that, I have a very good offensive staff. It's a comfort zone, like on short yardage, that I've been used to. And you know, I've heard people say, "Are oh, you go running the quarterback again?" And, but usually, you see the official do this. I made that joke you know, for, that's, for five years, and but it worked every time, right? I mean, that's not every time, but most of the time. 
You said you made that joke? I, I, You're I, one of those guys? I'm, absolutely. <laughs> Quarterback draws. No, I, I think you have low, those are great questions. We've had it. We've had Cardell. We've had, I had Chris Leak at Florida. I had uh, Alex Smith. It was a little bit of a dual threat, but was more of a drop back guy. Uh, so you... You no, know, that's our philosophy. Who's the best quarterback out there is Dwayne Haskins. He's playing his you-know-what off, and so keep doing it. So, yeah, I'm very – I know one thing also is very comfortable now seeing those screens come out of his hands so fast and seeing them, you know, pinpat, pinpoint accuracy. There's certain times of the game that I'm, I'm used to having something in my pocket that it's not there. And we had two situations Saturday that we have to figure that out. One, we didn't make it. One, we made it by that. And so that's those are all those are all questions that we have. But the, to say I'm not comfortable, that's not fair. But, but it's the whole thing, right? Of you maybe have a philosophy as a coach, but you do what's best for your talent. Always. You fit, you've always said that. Always. But this is that in action, right? Sure. This is exactly this. And, and you know we're throwing for 340 a game or something like that, and, and we're winning games. That's our job. We're taking care of the football, and we're throwing the ball and, and utilizing some very good players. And he's a very good player. You mentioned earlier the idea of you guys are not at your ceiling yet with this team. I think that's pretty obvious with the kind of talent you have out there. I'm sure at times in your career you've had teams maybe at midway through the season where they're playing really well, but maybe you have an idea we might be close to our ceiling. And then you have times where, man, maybe we're making some mistakes here and there, but there's a lot more there. How do you? We just don't have time. I don't. uh, Once again, all due respect, it's uh, you went on the road twice against, in our opinion, I can't remember where TCU was ranked, but that's a top 10 team on the road, and you went to Penn State on the road. I don't know if any schools in the country done that yet this year. We've done it. We walked away with wins. And we, by the way, also we lost one of the top football players in America on defense. Uh, we're just coaching our tails off to get guys better. It's once again the call to arms, like we mentioned earlier, about young players that have to contribute. You know, what, is the ceiling here? Is it, we don't have time. We're just working on what we have to work but on. You to said, get but you know how good this team is already, but you know it can even be better. Not even close to where we are. All right, Bill. Uh, we've all seen Chase Young's talent, um, especially with Nick Bosa being out. The game that he had on Saturday. I mean, do you, how much of a breakthrough is that? And, and talk about ceiling. What is his ceiling? Uh, he's, you know, he, he's uh, had a little bit of an ankle, but uh, he's been fighting through it. You saw glimpses. He played outstanding Saturday, and uh, um, you know that ceiling word again. I, you know, he's just a second-year player that's playing very well, and he has unlimited potential. I know you didn't want to talk about Iowa, um, but this is the same situation. A huge win, um, going against a team that that can be dangerous. What is very your dangerous. message? What is uh, your message? To practice about really hard players? Tuesday, and and we'll have that chat. I know you probably know this, but have you had any a- interaction with uh, Luke Fickle or Mike Vrabel on their pretty good starts here to their head coach? Yeah, yeah, we texted once, and you know, just we're all in bunker mentality right now. I did text with uh, Mike the other day. You see your alma mater, I just uh, had a kid there too. Yeah. You know? Yeah, they're really happy for him. You're not surprised by Luke? No, Luke's done Luke Fickle's elite. Two. Luke Fickle's elite, and those are two guys that. Uh, my coaching career, two of my favorite people on top of coaches. Second row right, Tony. Urban, uh, <clears throat> last week we talked about the linebackers, the starting linebackers, maybe not performing at their best. This past week, all three graded as champions. Was there a message this week to them or about them? Yeah, play better and, uh, you know, let's, let's get them in position to be successful. So that's the message. Uh, and then also, um, when you're playing a game, on the road against a Penn State or an opponent that you uh, recruit against. How aware are you of the players that are visiting that weekend? Mark Pantoni, our director of recruiting, really is. I, you know, I, I hear a little bit, but it's all about punt team and third downs and all that. Front row right, Austin? Then I know it's only Monday, so maybe you might not have a definitive answer at this point, but what do you think uh, will play out at that other safety spot? I believe Isaiah is out for that first half. How do you address that, and does that yeah. position continue to be a concern for you? Yes, it is. Um, we haven't made a final decision. Jocelyn went been playing well, and Sean Wade's the next, and Brendan White. So you have three uh, capables. Uh, this is going to be a big week of practice to determine what happens. When you've had conversations with Greg, how often does that spot come up, and what are there common issues that you guys have seen through five weeks there? Yeah, it's when one breaks, you got to get him down. You know, no, 
we've had a history of getting guys down because it's not going to be perfect all the time. You know, we're a very aggressive man coverage team, and there's been a couple examples this week of not getting them down. So those are all things that we're working on. And final two uh, individuals, front row right, Tim. Yeah, Urban. Uh, when you when you approach wide receivers about what it takes to play, and you broach the idea of blocking, I'm talking about a guy coming right in the door. What is maybe it's not your conversation, but what is the conversation? You know, what, what is it that you express to them, and when do they usually get it? Well, it depends on the individual. You know, usually Mike Thomas, it took a while. Um, you know, there's a rite of passage, and usually you have to perform on special teams before you catch a pass. You know, those are Ben Victor starting on kickoff return now. Never did that before. Uh, and he's playing, you know, it was brought to my attention. I shared that with our team yesterday that this all triggered when he started performing on special teams. He, he gets a sense of value, and he gets a sense of respect. You know, and that whole thing about respect is not given, is earned. How do you earn it? Oh, I'm going to go catch a pass. No chance. You're not catching a pass here. You're going to go block. You're going to go be on special teams and be a football player. And then good things happen. What, when in your background, I know you don't look back, but I'd like you to look back at this. When in your background did you come to that conclusion that if you're going to be a wide receiver and you're going to play for me, what, what was it that spurred that kind of thinking? I think Ohio roots. I think the toughness, the part that uh, that's never going to change, whether you run a screen, you know, Terry McLaurin blocked three people on that screen. And then, by the way, on the last touchdown, he blocked three people. And KJ did a really good job. He ran with the ball and kind of high-stepped it in the end zone, which is, you know, all due respect to KJ, that's fine. But his, his soulmate, by, and he's, he recognized that. So that's just been part of the DNA. When you look at Indiana, what just jumps out at you from a defensive standpoint? They they played pretty well. I mean, played, no, yeah. they played very well. Yeah. Uh, they've got a bunch of new starters. Their scheme is outstanding. You know, I think they're very well coached, and uh, they got answers for everything. That's what I. You know, we're we're just knee deep in it now. But that's my initial reaction. And you, obviously, very good players. And then I think, do you expect teams to attack your defense on the edges? You know, they came out last year and were dropping dimes on those fade yeah. routes and stuff. Do you, do you expect that to continue? Uh, I, I don't think Penn State that was. No, they did, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. It depends on, you know, this, this quarterback they have, and I'm not studied him yet. That's usually on Wednesday. Uh, but they have a guy that's a dual, you know, the Cincinnati uh, Ramsey is a, you know, is a gutsy player, man. And he's one of those guys that creates something out of nothing. So it depends on what you're facing. You know, last year's quarterback that they started was more of the drop back. And he was, like you said, dropping seeds on people. This is, you know, this guy's a very good thrower, but he's also got the other element. And final question, Art. I've got uh, two quick separate ones. Um, did you review one? Did you review the targeting call yes. on Isaiah? And what is your takeaway? No, we have. Uh, I just read it before I walked in. We turned it in, and it came back that the uh, uh, first of all, you can't appeal it. I didn't know that you can't appeal it. You know, I watched um, on the, someone show me on the phone, and I'm all into the safety of this game. So I, I get it. I understand it. To say I agree with it. I don't have time to argue with it and all that. The call was made, and once again, you start talking about safety of players. We're all in here, and uh, there's no intent, there's no crown, there is no targeting, and you know we've had a couple of those around here where you know the guy's going to try and wipe him out, but he's going for the ball. If you watch him, he's going for the ball. And contact was made. So once again, we don't have time to argue. It's done, and we're moving forward. And then one other thing, as a coach. In a moment when you guys take a go-ahead go touchdown the way you did there, how hard is it to get a two-point conversion in general in college football? And it just seems like that play is kind of tough. And do you guys ever discuss having a specific play that you, you no, have? Sure. Or Practice it every week, and usually have two or three in your pocket. Um, you know that we got moved back on the delay of game, which was you know there's that's another issue that. Uh, you know, in that chaos, what's going on during the course of a game, and they just roll it. You know, that's we got to practice that. And obviously, that was a momentum. You know, that was a game-winning touchdown. And we have to get that organized, get them on the field, and go. But it's you know nowadays three yards is tough. I don't know the percentage. You know, it used to be under 50 percent that you're going to make a two-point play. Um, but we have to. You know, obviously, it didn't work, so we have to execute better. Coach, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thanks.